Hello everyone, in this video we are going to learn about obstructive versus restrictive lung diseases. Firstly, we'll understand what do we mean by obstructive lung disease and then we'll discuss about restrictive lung diseases. And then finally, we'll discuss the differentiating factors of obstructive and restrictive lung diseases in a tabular form. So firstly, we'll start with obstructive lung disease. Obstructive lung disease is a category of respiratory disease characterized by airway obstruction. There is persistent difficulty in expelling or exhaling air from the lungs in obstructive lung disease. Examples of obstructive lung disease include asthma, bronchitis, chronic bronchitis and COPD that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Next, we'll discuss restrictive lung disease. Restrictive lung disease refer to a group of lung diseases that prevents the lung from fully expanding with the air which result in decrease in total volume of air that the lungs are able to hold. It is often due to decrease in elasticity of the lung themselves or caused by a problem related to expansion of chest wall during inhalation. Example of restrictive lung diseases include pneumoconiosis, asbestosis, sarcoidosis and pulmonary fibrosis. So now we'll differentiate obstructive and restrictive lung diseases on the basis of various lung capacities which are measured by spirometry. First lung capacity is FVC which is force vital capacity. It is the amount of air that can be forcibly exhaled from your lungs after taking the deepest breath possible. Next is FEV1 which is force expiratory volume in first second. It is the volume of air expired out in first second of a forceful expiration. In normal lungs, the ratio of FEV1 to FEVC is around 80% but when there is an obstruction like in obstructive lung diseases, the time taken to fully expire is prolonged so the ratio of FEV1 to FEVC is reduced. In severe airway obstruction, the force vital capacity of the lungs may be reduced but in that cases FEV1 is reduced even further so the ratio of FEV1 to FEVC remains low the ratio remains around less than 70 percent in restrictive lung diseases due to fibrosis or other underlying lung pathology which prevents the lung from fully expanding with air both FEV1 and FEVC are reduced in proportion to each other so the ratio of FEV1 to FEVC remains normal in severe cases of restrictive lung diseases, the FEV1 to FEVC ratio is increased above 80%. It is because of the decreased compliance of the lungs due to fibrosis, which results in decrease in FEVC even more than FEV1. In these cases, the ability to expire air is still better than the ability to inspire. So finally, we'll discuss various differentiating factors of obstructive and restrictive lung diseases in a tabular form. Firstly, we'll talk about the pathology. The pathology in obstructive lung disease lies in difficulty in expelling or exhaling air out from the lungs. In restrictive lung disease, the pathology is the lungs are prevented from fully expanding with air. Examples of obstructive lung disease include asthma, bronchiectasis, chronic bronchitis and COPD. Examples of restrictive lung disease include pneumoconiosis, asbestosis, sarcoidosis and pulmonary fibrosis. Next, we'll talk about the total vital capacity. Total vital capacity remains normal in obstructive lung disease but it is decreased in restrictive lung disease. Forced vital capacity remains normal or, it, or sometime it might decrease in obstructive lung disease but it is always decrease in restrictive lung disease. Forced expiratory volume at 1 second is decreased in obstructive lung disease but it remains normal or sometimes it might decrease in restrictive lung disease. The FEV1 to FEVC ratio is decreased in obstructive lung disease. It is 
less than 0.7 in restrictive lung diseases the fev1 to fevc ratio is normal or increase it is equal to 0.8 or more than 0.8 so this finishes off with the topic of obstructive versus restrictive lung diseases hope you all like the video thanks for watching